On May 1, 2021, the world of comics lost one of its luminaries with the passing of John Paul Leon. His immense talent and thoughtfulness towards the craft of black and white picture making was universally respected by peers and fans alike. Leon was known for his early work on Milestone's Static and Shadow Cabinet titles, the Earth X Limited series for Marvel, and perhaps my personal favorite, The Winterman for Wildstorm. In addition, he embellished countless comic book covers with his art and contributed to style guides for Hollywood films such as Superman Returns, Batman Begins, and The Dark Knight. Recently, my co-host, Swain, offered a brief word of remembrance regarding Leon here on the podcast. As Swain recalled, Leon was regarded as a friend of the show and stated that Sidebar was his favorite podcast. I'm Adrian Johnson, representing my co-host Dwight and Swain's November 2010 conversation with John Paul Leon. Yeah. That is, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Figure. And it took everybody by storm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's that's our joke for the day, and, and, and not not Oral Munro either, <laughs> yeah, or Halle Berry for that matter. <laughs> hey, why don't we try and talk about the weather the entire interview? Let's okay. see how long we can. <laughs> <laughs> we can integrate that into the, you know? yeah. Oh man! Well, you know there is a static shock. Did it? Oh, see now, <laughs> and wow. that's it, JP. That's all we got. <laughs> <laughs> that was good though. That was you know, God. We'll go ahead and jump in here and and, uh, and not take up of any, any more of your time with our uh, stupidity. <laughs> right. uh, that's that's fine. Yeah, whatever you want to do. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Well, um, from what we know, you as you said earlier in the conversation, you were born in New York City in 1972. Right. And you moved to Florida as a kid, and you currently live in Miami. Right. Okay. Right. And your parents are immigrants from Cuba. That's right. And your first professional work was at the age of 16, doing some illustrations for uh, for Dungeons and Dragons. That's correct. Right. Okay. Now I got to I got to drop a question in here. No, for, that, t- for TSR. Yeah, TSR. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I guess technically. Right. Yeah. yeah. But um, were you blown away at sixteen, knowing that you were getting paid to draw, or or is it one of those things where the story sounds a lot more glamorous in print, maybe than it actually was? I mean, you were a kid doing professional work. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I was uh, in high school at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, I got one of those um, one of those books called The Artist Market yeah. mm-hmm. at, at a bookstore that was a listing of different uh, art directors and magazines and uh, books and things like that where you could submit um, uh, portfolios to, Mm -hmm. basically just a directory of art directors. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I always loved to draw. I was actually in, I went to an art high school similar to the um, art and design, I guess, in New York. In New York Uh, City, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's called New World School of the Arts, and it's here in Miami in downtown. And uh, it was a mag- one of the first magnet schools in South Florida, okay. uh, in which they like they bring kids from all over the city into the uh, centralized location and specialize for three hours a day uh, in either visual arts, dramatic arts, music, dance, things like that. Uh, so you know, I was very sort of you know ambitious in that regard as a, as a kid. You know, mm-hmm. so uh, being like a D and D player as a kid, I, I thought it would be a good idea to try and. Like submit some work to uh, to TSR and see mm-hmm. just to see what happens, you know. Mm-hmm. And you know, I got I got a call from the art director of I think it was Dungeon Magazine. It was a yeah, magazine. yeah, it was a great magazine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a couple issues of that when I was. Yeah. Shut up! Shut <laughs> it up! Uh, I'm getting I'm getting teased from my geekdom now, JP. <laughs> oh, I thought you were being sarcastic. No, no, seriously. No, no. I had it, dude. I'm actually seriously. teasing both you and JP. <laughs> Hey, I was a dice rolling, uh, uh, chick smacking, you know. <laughs> anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> go ahead, JP. Uh, well, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's that's how I got my first work. I, I sent in some Xeroxes from, uh, uh, you know, some some illustrations that I had done uh, just for fun, really. Uh, and uh, you know, they got in touch with me about maybe a month later. So. Okay. Wow. Now, were I you st- maybe about about five or six jobs for them? Okay. Now, were you stoked, man? Were you like, oh, I have arrived? Well, I, I don't know about that, but I, I was definitely like, 
like surprised and, and, and definitely stoked. I mean, I really was, you know, excited to, you know, get printed work. That was sure. like a big deal. Sure. Know? Okay. And and the buddies you played uh, D and D with were they were they surprised to see were they stuff in the magazine? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't. I actually don't remember how how enthusiastic they were about it. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah. I, I, but by this time, I wasn't playing anymore. So okay. You know, I, uh, by the time I was sixteen, I think I had had moved on to like just drawing as much okay. as possible. But okay. but uh, there were a few years there, like in my early teens, where we like played a lot of D and D, and it was. You know, very very cool game because you sort of uh, are forced to use your imagination. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. Um, so, and that's probably helped inform helped inform your uh, your storytelling a lot too. I think so. I mean, I, I couldn't sort of pin it down, but I, I would imagine so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So after you uh, graduated from high school, um, I'm, I guess, I'm guessing you applied to uh, the School of Visual Arts in New York City, right? And uh, and attended there. Now, and you actually. Again, you were born in New York City, moved to Florida, but then you decided to return to New York to go to school. Now, was was Ringling not an option in Florida for you, or was was uh, SVA just a better choice? Um, actually, we took a we took a school trip to Ringling to mm-hmm. check out that school. That's in Sarasota, right? Right. Mm-hmm. The uh, the Ringling school, um, you know, it just was out of the question for me because I just found at that time this was nineteen eighty nine. I think Sarasota was such a sleepy town, you know, mm, yeah. that it seemed like, well, what the hell am I going to do here for four years? <laughs> right. You know, I, mean, I, I, I don't know anything about that school. It may be a great school. I, I really I don't know. It um, yeah. But it just, just the environment just seemed very sort of a little bit too laid back. Okay. Um, and the idea of studying art and going to New York uh, was very exciting. So. Okay. And I like the fact that SVA had a... Uh, uh, very highly uh, regarded illustration program, mm-hmm. as well as a cartooning department. Mm-hmm. I'd say. Um, and the fact that they had working professionals teaching there uh, was was a cool thing because I thought that you could get like sort of state of the art type of instruction. Uh, mm-hmm. Little did I know. <laughs> <laughs> you say that curiously. Just, just, no, just kidding. It was a great school. <laughs> Well, I mean, you made some really, really uh, fantastic connections there. You, you, I mean, you, you, st- you have mentors like like Walt Simonson and, and Eisner, and, and mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you, you can't really get better tutelage than, than yeah. Walt Simonson yeah. and, and Eisner uh, and Potter. Oh, Jack Potter, yeah. Jack Potter, yeah. Uh, uh, just you know, I can go on and on. We can do an hour on Jack Potter. There we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah I don't know if you guys know anything about him, but I don't. Uh, is he in relation to Harry? Okay, come on. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is funny. That is, that you know, is the... not funny. <laughs> Don't encourage him, John Paul. I'm sorry, man. I just... <laughs> it's been a long day. I'm going to cut his me. mic off for 10 minutes. He's, <laughs> he's on podcast restriction. Right, go to the corner, Dwight. Go to the corner. Uh, sorry, buddy. No, you was Jack Potter? Uh, Jack was just a great uh, illustrator from the 50s and early 60s. And, okay. And, and, you know, he had been teaching at School of Visual Arts for... Uh, I don't know, like 30 years when I got there. So wow. he had his his system down, and his system was was really inspirational and 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 sort of eye opening. He he really sort of um, had a very strict um, method of teaching in which he, he sort of taught you to break the figure down into shapes and draw shapes and think in terms of shape and composition and and uh, just you know went on and on into different uh, levels from there. But he you know, was just uh, a guy who really you know. Uh, could change your sort of your world view in terms of just visually just uh, would turn everything on its head and you know you would start to see things in a different way and mm-hmm. and, and uh, just really uh, just uh, meant a lot to me his instruction mm. so would you say you're more you're more compositionally affected by what he did or or, or just in terms of uh, the structure of the anatomy or both well, er- everything is composition right I mean, that, that's the thing uh, it was basically you drew the clothed figure. There were hardly ever nudes in that class. And you learned uh, pretty quickly that the figure is really composition as well. It's all composition. Uh, uh, it's all sort of uh, shapes and how they relate to each other mm-hmm. uh, at its core. Um, it, it wasn't really an anatomy class. Mm. Uh, I hope you, don't, you guys don't mind if I sound s- slightly distracted. It's because I'm, I'm, I'm drawing while we're, while we're talking. So no, I'm, that's I'm, cool. Oh, that's cool. I, I, I'm definitely pressing hard on a deadline this weekend, so I, okay. I, I can't afford to sort of uh, 
leave the drawing board. So I, I apologize if I sound no, kind of no, no, no. Uh, Do your thing. It's it's fun being in the lab with you, right? You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are you working on? Oh, I just <laughs> fucked up. Thanks <laughs> <to> you. <laughs> <laughs> And that's our contribution for the weekend, right? <laughs> we'll be leaving now. <laughs> uh, no, Dwight was asking, what, 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 are you, what, what are you working on, man? What are you drawing right now? Can you I, I'm us? working on a Nick Fury, uh, actually Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos okay. um, special issue for Marvel. All right. Is that the thing you're doing with Jesse Alexander? That's right. That's okay. Right. All right. Cool. Cool. We were going to ask you about that later, but uh, um, that's cool that you brought it up. Yeah, man. Um, JP, after school, uh, did you immediately pursue getting into comics? Yeah, I, I got into comics while I was in school. Okay. Um, I, I got into uh, comics in 1992. Okay. My first uh, comics job was a, a series of eight-page short stories for Dark Horse, uh, RoboCop uh, yep. short stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and soon after that, a miniseries called RoboCop Prime Suspect. Okay. The uh, Now, were those a result of the uh, the sample pages that you ended up showing Shrek? Because I think he was at Dark Horse at the time, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. Cool. And, uh, and it was from after RoboCop. It, did you go straight into uh, Milestone and start working on Static Shock that's with right. those guys? Yep. That's well, okay. right. Well, it, okay. wasn't, it wasn't Static Shock. It was just Static. Was it Static? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. And it was the return of the cool. Yeah. Okay. Now, was that a fun gig? That was a blast. Okay. Cause... Static was a blast. Are you kidding? <laughs> that was oof. I had a great time doing that. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me personally, I was working for the first time consistently, mm-hmm. and I was just, you know, the, the, the learning curve was really steep, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and and the writing was so much fun. It was Robert Washington uh, mm-hmm. who was writing that stuff, and his writing was so much fun, and uh, it was just a, it was a great time. Mm. Now, you weren't one of the creators on that book. That was uh, McDuffie and uh, Dennis Cowan and those guys? Right. Okay. Now, did you have? Did you benefit greatly from having Dennis Cowan there as a presence? Him being an artist, and you being an artist, and him obviously being a bit yep. more seasoned than you were at the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Dennis was great. He was, uh, uh, you know, uh, a good sort of uh, mentor, of sorts. Men- yeah, sort of a mentor to sort of uh, go over the pages without any bullshit, and you know, tell me what was wrong and what I needed to fix, and okay. you know, what wasn't clear, and. And, you know, Dennis turned me on to Alex Toth, and I'm eternally grateful for that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I love Alex Toth. Now, we yeah. could literally do the next 60 minutes on <laughs> Alex Toth, right. and I would yeah. not lose any energy, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the man is, is part of the Godhead as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So much so. Um, you could tell a story, you know, man. Yeah. He was, he's an awesome, uh, awesome artist and, yep. and terribly underrated uh uh, by everyone other than his peers, mm-hmm. uh, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So anyway, okay. So Alex Toe, I what? got you right. <laughs> um, it yeah. was af- after you worked on uh, on Static Static, yeah, with uh, over at Milestone, Roger Hawkins. Yeah, exactly. Was your uh, was your next major gig the Earth X gig at Marvel? Um, I wouldn't say that. Uh, after Static, uh, I mean, you want a chronological sort of list because everything for me was major. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Uh, I guess the most visible thing I did after Static, I mean, I did a, another ongoing for for Milestone called Shadow Cabinet after Static. It's okay. Another, okay. another right. monthly title. I did about maybe 14 issues of that, I think. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, then after that, I did a series of uh, shorter jobs for Marvel. Mm-hmm. Actually, not true. Uh, while I was working on Shadow Cabinet, I did a Man of Steel annual for, for DC. It was a double-sized uh, Man of Steel annual. It was like a Superman Year One okay. story. Mm-hmm. Uh, more f- most fun I've ever had on, on any story was that job. That was just a blast. Really? No, why, uh, why so? Well, I got to draw all the sort of classic uh, Justice League characters that I grew up with, and okay. you know, it was it was uh, just sort of a yeah, it was a baptism in a way into the DCU, you know, drawing okay. Superman, Batman, you know, Aquaman, and, uh, Green Lantern, everybody was in that story. Right. Um, so, so I kind of primed uh, you for Earth X then at that point, because there was a whole litany of characters in the Marvel Universe mm-hmm. that you had, you had to draw versus, you know, Static. Uh, well, Shadow Cabinet was a team book, so I was a little bit uh, prepared for that. Right. By the time Earth X, oh, Earth X rolled around maybe like five years later. So, okay. Uh, 
the team book is really a whole other animal than than the you know the single character book. It's mm-hmm. just much more work, and mm-hmm. it really challenges your sense of composition mm-hmm. and keeping things interesting while keeping you know several characters in every panel and you mm-hmm. know, just you know it tests your 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 editing skills. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there were a few small jobs for Marvel. Uh, a, a miniseries called The Further Adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix. A one-shot right, right. called Logan, Path of the Warlord, things like that. Mm-hmm. And then after that was, you know, uh, a series for DC called Challenges of the Unknown. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. Which I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about it. Well, let's, let's, go back, no, let's go back to Milestone for a minute. Um, what was the biggest challenge for you, considering, I mean, Milestone had an had a urban setting. And I guess uh, coming from Miami, living in New York... Uh, did you find that the setting in New York City to be like like perfectly set up for Dakota, and that you were able to like really get into it using some yeah. of the settings you saw there? Um, well, I mean, there's just so much to grab onto with an with an urban setting. You know, uh, everywhere you look, there's a subject. Right. So, uh, I mean, you, you can take a trip to New York and you see that for yourself. And everywhere you look, there's a a perfectly composed picture. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's ama- true. amazing. Yeah, that was my experience uh, there last a uh, couple weeks ago. I guess a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was funny in one of the interviews you read, uh, JP, you were talking about, uh, I guess, coming up with uh, with shots and stuff for New York City, and you said one of the best places you found was Woody Allen movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think there's a scene in the, it's either the, I don't think it's the latest, um, it's the Ex Machina special that just came out that you did. Oh, that's my tip of the hat to the Gordon Willis, the, the Manhattan yeah. Uh, poster, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, said, yeah, I said, wait a minute. This is Manhattan, yeah. is, and then the I read the Pearl interview. Bridge, yeah. yeah, I read the interview yeah. later, and I said, "This is this is literally that that same shot, which yeah. is a gorgeously shot film." Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, I think that if if ever there was a Woody Allen film that was a love letter to New York City, it's definitely Manhattan, oh, and not definitely. Ju- not even just by the title, but I mean it was just lushly shot, all in black and white. Mm-hmm. It was just beautiful. Yep, yep. But well, that was funny because the the, the script uh, didn't call for that shot i just knew that they were up by the river somewhere and i, I mm-hmm. asked brian brian vaughn the writer mm-hmm. you know is it cool I, i'm not quite sure because they're supposed to be in Queens somewhere i think some okay. park specifically okay and i don't know that park so i asked him you know is it cool if i i want to do like a like an homage to gordon willis and the manhattan uh poster uh, from from the woody allen movie is it cool if I get the Queensboro Bridge in there? Because I don't know if you would see the Queensboro Bridge right. at, from that <laughs> part. He said, yeah, just go ahead and cheat it. Go ahead. That's fine. Do whatever you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, fans who live in New York City, if it wasn't, they'd call you. They call bullshit on it if you uh, if you threw it in. You can't see that bridge from yeah, where there's I know, right, 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 right. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Yeah, you have to stay authentic, man. Yeah. People. Yeah. Definitely. Well, we have been trying to ease you, I guess, towards uh, Earth X because uh, that's where a lot of people, I think. Well, I was going to ask him a question. I mean, I, oh, go what, ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Why Woody Allen, man? Why not like Martin Scorsese or Sidney Lumet? You know, from you know. <laughs> uh, of- I, I love them all. You know, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. here's another. Speaking of Sidney Lumet, uh, the mayor's office in both Ex Machina specials that I've drawn is a direct swipe from Night Falls on Manhattan. The uh, Oh, the DA's, okay. the DA's office. Go back and look at the movie. Cool. Oh, cool. okay. <laughs> Slam. <laughs> okay. It's one wow. of the coolest like city offices I've ever seen on film. You know, okay. I've never actually been in like you know a high, a high-ranking city official's office, but that movie, uh, that office in that movie is just. It's great, and I think it's—I think they built it on a set or something. But okay. but it, it looks very authentic. Okay. All right. Well, again, trying to ease you. A bit into Earth X. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It seemed as if Earth X was the project where your art style started evolving into more of what you do now, like the early Static Shock stuff, and or Static, excuse me, I'm, uh, the early Static stuff and uh, uh, some of the early work that I've seen. It seems like Earth X was a place where um, the JP that we know now seemed to be emerging then. Is that a fair assessment in your opinion? Um, you know, I would say it probably started earlier than that okay and challenges of the unknown okay um, i agree with that yeah i would say uh, so yeah although i feel that as far as the way that i was drawing on earth x i think that maybe the stuff that i'm doing now is more textured than it was back then mm-hmm. okay. uh, that there, there's there's more variation to what i'm doing now than okay. there was back then at least that's the way i see it but but that sort of 
look of uh, you know holding lines blown out as if light was striking form and 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 heavy shadows to to delineate form. Mm-hmm. I think really began on challenges of the unknown. Okay. Mm-hmm. You mentioned challenges of the unknown, and, and uh, that's one of my favorite things you did too, especially with the, the whole Batman situation where he's downstairs, kind of doing his detective sleuthing work, and Alfred walks down. Oh, cool! Thanks. And I was wondering, man. I mean, your your facial features. One of the things I first noticed about your work, JP, that always strikes me is the fact that your stuff looks looks photorealistic, but doesn't like photo grab. It looks like you actually know how the form goes and how it works. You're not just tracing things like yeah. uh-huh. some other artists, which will be you know remain not, nameless. Right. So, I mean, I was curious he, that. The Batman that's downstairs in the Batcave, looking at the looking at the work that Alfred comes and talks to him about. He reminds me of Sherlock Holmes. Did you? I mean, are you, were, who is the likeness that you used, or or what you influenced in terms of your characterization of of, of, of Bruce Wayne as Batman? In that scene, uh-huh. I I don't remember exactly the characterization. It was a, as an amalgam. Usually, my heads or faces are sort of combinations of different. Photographs. I try because I, I want to keep away from that like static kind of direct photographic look. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I think man, what was I looking at? Some photographs in the 1920s or 30s or something. Some intelligentsia in in New Yorkers. Okay. Man Ray photographs. I I forgot the name of the because the it, name of the guy. It, it looks very. It looks very. It's it, it's periodic. I mean, Batman, unlike any other Batman I've ever seen or have I've seen in, in quite some time, had a, had a certain sense of um, well, classical uh-huh. classical feeling to him. Like a, just just a uh, this guy looks intelligent. He's not just a playboy. He has a brain in his head. You could tell he just looks like he looks he looks like look, look like a sleuth. You believe this guy was a okay. somebody that would do the do the detective work. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Unlike unlike some versions of him, you don't think he would do the detective work. You know, what I mean? he's just a handsome. Yeah. I'll beat your ass type there, of guy. There are times in movies where you see. Uh, like especially like in action movies mm-hmm. where the action hero kind of displays a certain amount of intelligence and mm-hmm. you're like ah no. like Stallone in Rambo yeah, I don't know if he looks <laughs> yeah. smart enough to re- you know <laughs> <laughs> I mean so, sometimes when you're watching movies it does strike you that way doesn't it JP yeah yeah, yeah. you know where you like okay <laughs> yeah he's not in character obviously. I don't right, know right. yo wow he put the the C4 in the microwave and made it blow up ah, right, right right not <laughs> buying it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he maybe put a piece of pizza in the microwave. <laughs> But not the C four. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, no, that's cool. Uh, I, I hear what you're saying. That, that, that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, um, you know, that that's not something that really was on my mind. I guess I'm, I'm just trying to like draw as as, as well as I can, and mm-hmm. maybe you know that that's interesting. Like, you take away from it. Yeah. Um, right. different. Uh, each reader takes, you know, yeah. takes away from it something different, and that, right. that's very cool. That you know, you were struck with that because that's something that. You know, completely was something that yeah wasn't wasn't occurring to me. So indeed, uh, as far as EarthX goes, man, was that your first collab with uh, with Melissa Edwards on the colors? And let me think for a second. I think it was. Okay. I think well, I think Hollingsworth did maybe ten issues out of the series or mm-hmm. something, and she did the last several. Right. Something like that. I, I don't remember, but I think it was the first time we actually worked together. Yeah. Okay. And and you worked with her again on uh, on Winterman, correct? On Static Shock. On Static Shock, and then she did the colors to the last issue of Winter Men. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, now, because I know she's she's uh, she's married to uh, to Tommy Lee, your your studio mate at the Boulevard. That's right. Do you get an opportunity to kind of give her cues as far as the colors, or is your relationship with her in terms of you know dealing with any kind of a colorist is it the same as it would be with any other colorist? Where you just well, make maybe, maybe make notes in the mar- in the margins or something like that. They don't they don't do that anymore. They just I don't think that since everything is digital, mm-hmm. uh, you're talking like old school comics now. Okay, I know that that's the way I used I, to I'm, do it. I'm I showing my age, the, JP. <laughs> <laughs> no, I used to write the notes in the margins too, and and and, and I forgot where when I realized that the, these colors weren't getting my notes. I somewhere when they started going more digital, you know, okay. it's, it's, they're just scanning the pages in and, and you know fuck your notes. Uh, but, <laughs> but I will say I will say that. That yes, she is open to uh, uh, um, you know, my my input as well as other colorists. You know, okay. uh, I, I I don't know that I've recently if I've worked with a colorist who wasn't open to input. So mm. okay, uh, well, yeah, but the notes on the margins, no, it's, it's all digital now. Okay. so I don't think those notes make it. All right, I'm the old dinosaur who still thinks <laughs> that people are. <laughs> Paying attention to small details Look, like that, as opposed to just writing an email, which would be the most you know efficient way to communicate with right, your colors. Right. So. Panel three: Don't use blue. Uh, 
But anyway, I just thought that that was that was interesting because uh, um, Melissa's name you know had popped up. Trying to again trying to do my research, her name had popped up a couple of times. And actually, there's a couple other names that pop up. Like you, you tend to do quite a bit of work for Wildstorm, and and um, Ben Abernathy's name pops up, and Scott Scott Dunbeer. And I'm assuming that that's not by accident that it happens. That you just have a rapport with these folks. Uh, yes, a lot of the work I've done in the last several years has been for Wildstorm um, uh, because I was I've been working on Winterman mm-hmm. and. And, uh, you know, that book uh, had its problems uh, scheduling and uh, for other reasons that I won't go into right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we've heard it became, it, <laughs> it became necessary to uh, for me to sort of uh, take on side projects uh, while I was trying to complete that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the most immediate guys were the guys who I was working with who right. knew exactly what the situation was. Mm-hmm. You know? All right. So you had you, you did Winterman through uh, Wildstorm. Uh, yeah. You did a Midnighter through right. Wildstorm, and then the two X Mox that you've done thus far have been through uh, Wildstorm as well. Right, right. Yeah, okay. As well as the Tom Strong. Yeah, the, um, yeah, exactly. The yep, Tom, Strong have Tom Strong, which I, I, which I really liked. Right. <laughs> oh, thanks. I was not very fond of that character, but uh, I liked your rendition of him. Mm-hmm. He was a little more realistic and a little more, uh, for lack of a better term, less comic booky looking. Well, he's another, uh, go ahead. And that's why I dug it. Mm-hmm. Thanks. That yeah, was fun. I, I I hadn't read that book, and then. You know, when they offered me the job, I, I, I accepted it because I, I you know, I like Chris Sprouse's work. Yeah. Uh, so they sent me this all the Sprouse trades, and, and I read them all, and I really enjoyed it. And then it sort of digested that stuff and tried to sort of stay faithful to it uh, in that story. So that's that's cool. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. When when you get approached to do a job, a, a here and there kind of a thing, like the uh, the one shot that you did for uh, for Vertigo, the scalp issue. Mm-hmm. Um. In certain cases, obviously, like you said there, I'm sure they send you some material so you can at least familiarize yourself with it. When you did that 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 scalp with Jason Aaron, was that more challenging than anything else that you would do in the sense of you know you've got you know the, this whole Native American uh, backdrop going on? Mm-hmm. Was it was it tougher for you, or was it no more tougher than uh, than anything else you would work on? No, I, I found it kind of a relief actually mm-hmm. uh, because it was a different world, you know, mm-hmm. a different subject matter that. That you know you don't often see in fiction, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I I found it uh, a relief. It was very spe- very specific ethnic- ethnic- uh, ethnicities uh, mm-hmm. to have to you know nail down, and you know that was uh, that I enjoy that you know because uh, you know, I think comics kind of can get a little bit um, uh, just generic in their yeah. in their in their portrayal of of, of real life, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's definitely one of the things you steer away from too, and I, I you know. Uh, I, I appreciate that about your work. Yeah. I really love this series, and um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that uh, Dave Johnson did the cover to the uh, the issue that you did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. And uh, anyway, it was. I love Gara, and I love, I love the oh, series. Oh, yeah, his, his stuff is, is great. Amazing, uh, amazing. And, yeah. I, it, when I, and when I first saw your name on, on the, uh, the book as a, uh, as a fill-in artist, I was like, I don't know, because I was in love with Gar- with Gara at that point. Yeah, yeah. Gara's work is great. I, that's, uh, that stuff. I had never heard of him until I saw that stuff. They sent me, mm-hmm. you know, a few of the scalp trades, and and uh, I was really impressed with this. There's an immediacy to his drawing. It reminds me a little bit of Jordy Bernay. You know. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of going back to uh, a, a toast kind of a uh, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Cool. yeah, I uh, I have to agree with uh, Howard Chaikin. He was saying that he really loves the uh, that series too. And his compliment to it was, he says, I totally believe it. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that's, right. one, that's one of the things about it is, is you totally believe what's going on. That's awesome. Right. Um, in terms of the, the, uh, yeah, yeah. the, the setting. But we, we, you mentioned uh, Winterman earlier and, and some of the schedule issues and whatnot, and, and I guess trying to shift gears into that. Because while I'm glad that you guys finally did get that special out, and it had, it had been a pretty long delay, could you tell us why the series was cut down from, I think it was, what, eight issues as originally planned down to mm-hmm. six? Yeah, it's a long story. How much time we got? Uh, <laughs> as, give, as, give, as much as you like. Yeah, give us the Wikipedia version. <laughs> uh, boy, um, you know, it's tough for me to get into this story mm-hmm. without saying some very negative things about uh, my writer. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I'd rather not do that. But, okay, right, that's but, cool. But uh, basically it came down to, uh, you know, some deadlines that got away and, and, and uh, the book wasn't selling too well to begin with. Mm-hmm. And... Um, uh, you know, Wildstorm made a made a financial decision to cut it down. I got you. In a nutshell. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
All right. Well, I kind of figured as much. I don't, I don't think I'd ever read anything in specific, but I kind of figured as much. Mm-hmm. But, um, well, you mentioned having a lot of fun at least working on that series, and I imagine just like with, uh, with Scalped, it's a different subject matter than you normally see in comics, and mm-hmm. so it gave you an opportunity to draw things that you don't normally draw, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that story. And uh, I had a very sort of um, passionate relationship with that series. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, uh, yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of referencing. Right. Okay. And, and speaking of reference, that's, that was one of the things that I wanted to ask you about in terms of uh, your process and your craft. Um, because you obviously do a good bit of photo ref, as you, as you mentioned earlier, and just using you know real life settings as a, as as a uh, as a start off point for for your settings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, when did you start incorporating a lot of that stuff into your work? You mentioned it actually happened earlier, I guess, uh, maybe with Challengers of the Unknown in yeah, that in I, that era. It, it's 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 fair to say that it started to sort of surface more on Challengers. Although I was looking at stuff what long before then, mm-hmm. uh, I was looking at reference as far back as static i was looking at reference i uh, believe it or not i was even looking at some stuff here and there uh on robocop yeah. which you mm-hmm. would never guess by looking at the book but <laughs> but uh but uh, we forgive you but you know that 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 was uh that was a point where i i, I didn't feel too obligated with staying uh uh you know realistic uh mm-hmm. or or true to uh, a lot of the reference so uh, it, it sort of, I started to sort of focus a little bit more on getting stuff looking as real as possible mm-hmm. on Challengers, I guess, as a result of, you know, not drawing any superheroes and, you know, keeping this story sort of grounded in reality. Right. Um, uh, you know, the flip side of that is that when you try and focus on keeping things, you know, as real as possible, things can get awfully boring. That's right. For, for right. you and for the reader, you know. Sure, right. So... Is it is it more or less time consuming for you to use uh, photo ref or ref in in general? And and in, and in an instance where you are using uh, 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 photos, are you shooting a lot of it yourself? Are you trying to com- combine that with maybe uh, you know finding stuff online or googling and that kind of thing? Yeah, I, I hardly ever shoot my own reference. I just I, there are some artists who like you know they pose people and they photograph them and mm-hmm. you know they go through. A, I just I, I think I'm just lazy about that. I just don't have that kind of patience okay. to, to go through that many steps. I, I'm very sort of impatient about just getting to the drawing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And for me, there, there's a great deal of discipline for me in just you know uh, trying to. Uh, uh, not jump right into the drawing and, and, and finding the reference and, and trying to sort of attack it in the layout. Mm-hmm. And, and even then I feel like, fuck, the job is done already. Once, once the layout is done, I almost feel like the job is done. And, okay. uh, and now it's just a question of drawing the friggin' thing, which can be very boring. Because okay. uh, <laughs> the storytelling is really, you know, the, 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 the most exciting it. part of, mm-hmm. of the job, you know? Okay. Um, p- part of the reason why I asked that is because there's a shot of you on your site with a camera. Yeah. Yeah, so I just didn't. I didn't know maybe you were a, like a, a hobbyist shutterbug, or you know what the deal was. Well, that was taken on a trip that uh, Tommy Lee and I and a few others took to uh, to England, uh, doing style guide work for for Batman Begins. Okay, okay. okay. When you so, guys went to Shepperton and uh, yep, okay, yep, yep. okay, cool, cool. So I was just a tourist at that point. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it was you. all play and no work at that at that uh, at that point in the road. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. That's cool. Um, now, is is it more or less time consuming for you to, to 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 try to find the reference? Because there are a lot of artists who 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 don't prefer to use a lot of reference. They prefer to draw as much from their imagination as possible. Oh, you? it's it's definitely more time consuming. Okay. Yeah, if, if it, as far as time, yeah, it's 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 without a doubt more time consuming. I just I just feel like it's an investment I want to make in the project that mm-hmm. that that pays off. You know, okay. in the end. Uh, but yeah, without a doubt, if I just sat down and drew a book completely out of my head, which I don't know that I'll have the balls to do anymore. Actually, I, I talked to Tommy about this a lot. Like, you know, it would be interesting to try and do a comic just completely out of your head with no reference. You know, right. that, that would be an interesting experiment, you know. Okay. He, he says, yeah, and it would look like shit, you know, but, <laughs> but, but maybe not, you know. Maybe you would be forced to solve problems in a way that, that you never would if you had reference, you know. Who knows? Right. Uh, just as an experiment, it would be nice to try that, although I don't know that I would dare do that on a job, you know. Okay. Right, okay. Right. <laughs> this is your own personal work, perhaps. You yeah. Can, you know, take in that direction. What What do you have to say, uh, JP, to people who are critics of that kind of thing? Because there are those who do prefer, like, one hundred percent imagination 
Uh, and then when I say critics, I mean like, you know, even your peers versus uh, versus someone who says, well, hey, I want, you know, I want things to look as authentic as possible in the places where it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, are you saying that uh, there are critics of, of using fo- any photo reference at all? Well, or that people people who use probably an inordinate amount of it or who, people who say when it's too obvious or um, – Takes you out of the story. Yeah, it takes you out of the story, and I, I don't get any, you know, I'm, I'm brought out of the world of imagination back into, oh, this is obviously this or that or the other thing. Right. Yeah, the, you know, I think that they have a point. I mean, it, it really depends on how you use it. From what you just said right there, it, it opens up sort of a, a can of worms uh, as far as different sort of schools of thought of, of you know, of comics and stuff. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there are, this, you know, certain people that think that, you know, things just should be as, as accessible to the reader as possible, and, and, and when you use photo reference, it takes you out of the story, and, you know, uh, but, you know, it really depends on how you use it. Right. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, photo reference is, is a very valuable uh, tool, uh, mm-hmm. and, and you can definitely become a slave to it, mm-hmm. and, and, and that can pr- produce some very uninteresting results. Conversely, if you just Stick to you know the tried and true sort of comic symbolism, you know this is hair, this is an eye, this is that can produce some very uninteresting results as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, it's how you use it. Um, I think, you know, I'm a great believer in simplicity mm-hmm. uh, and and economy and in, in, in art in general and in storytelling. Mm-hmm. And I think the danger with photo reference is that you need to learn how to edit yourself as an artist and what to put in and what to leave out mm-hmm. is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, certain images can have as many lines per square inch as a, let's say, an Alex Toth drawing, which, you know, has a quality to it. I, I, you know, let's get back to Alex Toth. I don't know how he does it. I'm sure he used a lot of reference at certain points. Sure. There's a, there's a warmth and there's a simplicity and a directness to his drawing that, that boggles the mind. Uh, but as far as lines per square inch, there's a simplicity to his stuff that... It rises above any kind of symbolism for me. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a naturalism, but there's also a, such a strong sense of editing in his drawing that it defies all the symbols that came before it in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I guess the the value of symbols uh, or of uh, and when you when you use the word symbol, you're kind of, you mean like typical comic book iconography. Yes. That kind of thing. Right. Okay. I guess the value of that is in its simplicity uh, and its directness uh, to the reader's heart, you know, and it gets, it gets the reader involved in, in the story. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there are new symbols to be found. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there are new um, marks to be made. Mm-hmm. So when you stick to the same old sort of tried and true symbols, I feel like there's something sort of stale about that. Mm-hmm. Now, there's some drawings that you look at, and they just seem like fifth-generation comic book drawings. And by that I mean that they just, there's not a sense of, of, you know, there's this sort of connotation that goes along with the word naturalism that, that for me, implies a kind of, uh, a boring kind of very safe, stale, um, maybe stiff sometimes kind of drawing. But naturalism uh, can really be the most direct form of drawing. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, I'm losing my train of thought, but That's okay. there's, a, there's a point where naturalism and abstraction meet, um, and uh, and I think that's something to strive for. That's a and very good I point. Think, I, th- I think that Toth uh, reaches that point uh, in moments in his drawing, you know, where it's if you flip the page upside down, um, it's just as beautiful in a way. Mm-hmm. As, uh, yeah, and you're talking about a guy whose stuff was grounded in in such strong composition and spotting of blacks. And, and like you were talking about the whole idea of simplicity, you know, I always say, you know, Alex Toth could make a circle with two dots and put a squiggle on it, and it'd, it'd be a face with so much character right. uh, and, and did not need all of the, uh, all of the, uh, the additional, you know, line work and rendering mm-hmm. um, that it might take another artist to, to give you that much character out of that face. Mm-hmm. Right. He, can, right. He, he could just make it happen. Right. Uh, we, we talked earlier about, uh, about colors, and you mentioned, uh, I think it was Matt Hollingsworth and, uh, and Melissa uh, doing the colors on uh, Earth X. And I, I had read in an interview that you did where you also mentioned that, that color doesn't uh, easily come to you, or at least at that time it didn't. And, um, and I know that your coloring uh, 
those DMZ covers that you you've been doing recently has right. has the trouble with color gotten gotten better with you here recently? It has, I have to say. Yeah, the, doing the DMZ covers uh, is like getting paid to learn. I mean, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we'll edit know, that part out so that your editor doesn't know that he's <laughs> he's paying you to go to school. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, hey, I'm not. You know, I'm not looking to hide anything. Uh, I gotcha. uh, you know, color doesn't come naturally to me, and 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 trying to resolve images in color uh is is uh is something that you know i've always sort of felt is kind of difficult for me because i I never feel like it matches the power of black and white Mm -hmm. but uh you know it's it's necessary okay okay um can we swing over and talk about the boulevard a little bit uh oh sure jp sure Now, now how when did all of you guys meet and hook up and uh and and start the boulevard We've all known each other for a long time. I've, I've known Bernard Chang since since high school, actually. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, I've known Tommy Lee since uh, about 94. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were both working at Milestone at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Bernard and Sean uh, started working at Valiant at the same time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which is around the early 90s as well. Okay. Uh, and Tommy's known Trevor. Actually, that's, that's how I know Trevor, through Tommy. Uh Trevor Goring uh, mm-hmm. for a number of years now, maybe about eight years. So you know we've we've known each other a while. Okay. And and you now why did you guys decide to link up and, and create this collective, uh, the Boulevard, essentially oh, a, vir- this, a virtual this, studio? Yeah, this this was just a, a lazy way of, 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 of wanting to hang out at conventions. You know, <laughs> really, well, that's really what that's about. Uh, and, and then you know we thought it'd be cool to you know start putting sketchbooks together. I mean, we're mm-hmm. always emailing stuff back and forth to each other uh-huh. um so um you know we thought hey let's let's set up the conventions together we can like you know do the convention circuit and we can also like you know put out our own sketchbooks mm-hmm. um so you know it's just really sort of snowballed into into something really creatively fulfilling uh it's great to get feedback from these guys mm-hmm. okay and that was going to be one of my questions because th- there are at least three three sketchbooks out now right right Right. Okay. Now, now, how do you guys benefit from? Uh, is it just more so you being able to critique and kind of share work, or do you guys ever collab on jobs, or does one person ever turn another person into a gig? Or yes, all those, all those things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Interesting. Um, as far as the boulevard goes, man, if if you all, you think if you all were all in the same city under the uh, under the same roof. That uh, that it would add to the mix of what you all are able to bring, uh, or do you think you guys would just get on each other's nerves? And it's probably yeah. better that you all be spread out. <laughs> That's a good question. I, I don't know. We all really get along, uh, okay. so uh, I think it might be really fun. Although I've never shared physical space in a studio with anybody, okay. So I don't know how I would handle that. Okay. Uh, um, for you know bursts of time, if I'm staying with Tommy, or if I'm staying with Bernard, or when we were at Shepherdson doing the style guide stuff. We all shared space, uh, mm-hmm. and that's been you know kind of a relief and fun and and you know more casual kind of atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I don't know how I would handle that over a long period of time, but we get along so well. I, I can't see that there would be any fights or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder if you guys would all begin to get like cabin fever and it turn into like a scene out of The Shining, right? You know, where <laughs> <laughs> here's JP. <laughs> <laughs> All work and no play. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's uh, JP a dull boy. <laughs> uh, I gotta I gotta ask you this. You mentioned your studio mates by name, Bernard uh Bernard Chang and uh Sean Chen and uh Tommy Lee Edwards and Trevor Goring. I gotta call BS on one thing, JP. Uh oh. Trevor okay. Goring is Kaiser Soze. I, I do not believe that he exists. Why, I've, why is that? I've met you guys on three separate occasions. Hey, I've never Trevor's seen. Never I've never seen Trevor Goring. Even in New York, I've never. Heard, I've never seen an interview with Trevor Goring. That I've seen this funny. one picture of a guy who looks like a uh, like a young Anthony Hopkins on the website. Right. I don't believe. Trevor Goring exists. That's hilarious. Well, I'll have to have Trevor give you a call. I'm going to email you my phone number. If you would, send him my phone number. Tell him to call me, leave me a voice message, and we'll put it at the end of this episode. Right. My name is Trevor Goring, and I do exist. I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to think that he's kind of like the uh, the guy that you guys blame stuff on. You know, oh, Trevor. <laughs> well, Trevor did it. It's uh, it was his deadline, not uh, right. not actually my own. Well, I think so. he was accredited in the, in the Watchmen for some stuff, though. So Trevor is the got more experience than any of us. Yeah, he's, he's been doing storyboards for years. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's he's our our, our movie guy. Yeah. Know? 
Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, his his stuff is great. He's a, he's a, he's a hardcore storyteller. Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm I'm joking. Obviously, his, right. his the stuff that he has in uh, in the Boulevard sketchbooks is great. It's very nice. Yeah, and we did knew we knew ahead of time that he had worked on Watchmen and uh, mm-hmm. quite a few other things. And then he do uh, was it Waterloo Sunset? Yeah, Waterloo yeah. Sunset. Yeah, yeah. Water, yeah, Waterloo Sunset. So yeah, I'm I'm joking, but. Uh, we were hoping that he was going to be in New York City back in February. Right? He was supposed to, but then he got into a movie that was just you know too busy and he couldn't he couldn't go. He had to cancel last okay. minute. Okay, that's okay. cool. Okay, that's cool. Last couple of questions yeah. uh, for you, JP, before we wrap it up with you, if that's cool. Sure. Yeah. Um, are you aware of your like pseudo uh, presence on YouTube? Huh? Uh, no. <laughs> More information, please. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There are two videos on YouTube. Okay. Uh-huh. One is with you and the rest of the Earth X team, and you guys are stacked up in a pyramid on uh-huh. each other's backs. I know what that is. <laughs> I haven't seen it on YouTube, but I know what that's from. Okay. This I'm, I'm going to explain it for Dwight because I just discovered it uh, a couple hours ago. Okay. <laughs> There's a video of uh, uh, Alex Ross mm-hmm. on his knee, all fours, and John Paul is on all fours. Okay. And then Bill Reinhold, the inker from Earth X, and Jim Kruger. Are on all fours on the, hit their backs, okay. Like right. they're making a, a cheerleading pyramid, okay. Right. And they announce each other, and they're in somebody's living room or something. And then a uh, hello, hello, yeah, okay. Wait, I think that's Trevor Goring calling me on the other line. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but, that's pretty funny. Uh, I know exactly what that's from, but go ahead. No, and then another guy like crashes through. That's, you that's guys, Nick Barucci. Is that Barucci? Down. Okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> No, what was the deal that, with that? That was that was filmed at Nick Barucci's house uh, when we were doing uh, some video work for not video work when they were shooting some video of us uh, for that the little interview you know, that, piece that you all did in his in his uh, basement or in his his warehouse or whatever. Yeah, that's some more of the same stuff. It okay. was all shot for that. that you know that that EarthX uh, hardcover that Graffiti Designs put out the the, the black and white edition. No. Uh-uh. Graffiti Designs put out a oversized black and white edition of Earth X, mm-hmm. um, maybe a few months after the series was finished. And there's a there's a CD ROM in the uh, in the in the collection. Okay. okay. So there's some video stuff in there of us at a signing in New York and that pyramid thing and yeah, yeah. talking okay. in the warehouse and so that's what that's from. Okay. okay. Now, how did they talk you guys? And I'm assuming that it was there might have been alcohol or money involved. But how did they talk you guys into stacking yeah. up on each other's backs and introducing each other? Yeah, I was going to crack a joke that we were all drunk, but, you know, nothing, <laughs> it was not anything, I, I wish I could say that. Now, I, I, I don't remember exactly, but I think I think we just, you know, thought it was a funny idea at the time, and it's probably pretty sad. Uh, it was like something out of a hard day's night. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You know, that's the thing. This stuff just never goes away. No, no, yeah. and it's, that's... Uh, <laughs> No, that's uh, that was a trip, man, and a, a, and I hope you won't be upset with us, but we will link to that on the blog so that people <laughs> oh, sure. can see it. You know, go ahead. <laughs> but the other thing is, is have you seen that trailer that someone did for Earth X? Yeah, it's got like some CGI and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, weird. Yeah, I think that was also in the disc. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it wasn't god awful. It wasn't great either. But it wasn't. Um, it wasn't god awful. But uh, I give it props for uh, for effort. You know. Uh. Yeah, uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I understand. I understand, bro. Right? You can live it down. We'll, you know. Um, before we let you go, I do. I do want to go ahead and promote what you are working on now, since you mentioned it earlier. Hmm? But as far as uh, as far as the Nick Fury story or the Sergeant Fury story that you're working on with Jesse at uh, at uh, at Marvel, what can you tell us about it? And how does it, how's it looking for you? And, and when will the issue be out? I think it's due out in. When, when is this thing due out? I think it's due out in May. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure when it's due out. Um, sometime either late spring, early summer. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. It's 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 action packed. It's a it's a, it's a one shot, thirty two pager, and it's it's you know World War Two and cool. it's the Howling Commandos and cool. it's, it's just it's just nonstop action. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. That's cool. That's cool. Um, has work been working with uh, Jesse been good? Because I know he has more of a resume in television than he does in comics. Oh, it's been fun. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to draw in this story, and okay. you know, it's it, it's been fun. Um, you know, some sequences that uh, have really been uh, a challenge to bring off. Uh, just uh, 
you know, when there's a lot of action and there's a lot of referencing combined, uh-huh. it, 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 it's, uh, it's a tough thing to sort of balance. Um, and okay. uh, this, this job has been very challenging in that regard. Okay. All right. Well, we wish you well with it. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a fan of Nick Fury, especially the original Nick Fury. I'm, yeah. I'm not that crazy about Sam Jackson. I'm not crazy the, uh, about yeah, Sam the Jackson. New, the new Nick Fury. Yeah. So. Uh, um, we'll see about that. As long as, long as you're, not using, <laughs> you're not using uh, David Hasselhoff as the photo ref, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, look forward, I'll definitely look forward to it. <laughs> hey, man. Don't hassle the Hoff, man. <laughs> That concludes this episode of Sidebar Forever, hosted by Dwight Clark, Swain Hunt, and Adrian Johnson. You can find us online at sidebarforever.com. Any emails or questions can be directed to us at sidebarforever at gmail.com. And also, subscribe to us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram.